Yeah, so welcome everyone. We are on week eight, prayers and meditations, uh, part five. So we, we have August 17, 1913 prayer with us by the mother. It's a bit long prayer and a lot of rich, very rich content to reflect upon. And that's why I this week only gave one because I think it's, we can really uh, reflect a lot on this prayer. So let's share our reflections. Whoever feel ready, feels ready, can unmute and share. Uh, shall I go, Monica? <clears throat> yes, please, Chitraji. Yeah. As you said, actually, it is a very rich prayer, and also I feel a vast and I mean vastness and wideness because she, Mother covered so many things in this prayer. No, actually, in the of course the first line is a beautiful line. Oh Lord, Master of our life, let us soar very high. Above all care for our material preservation. Of course, yeah, it is a, it, that line itself is a very deep, I feel, actually. And then she started directly, she is, I mean, uh, started, no, nothing is more humiliating and depressing than these thoughts so constantly turned towards the preservation of the body, yes. When I read these lines, no, I don't know. I rem reminded of uh, all those sadhaks initially who, I mean, came from uh, far off places without even thinking of any accommodation or food and also um, disregarding that uh, climatic conditions, everything. But um, when I read those stories, no, uh, I uh, felt that joy only actually. They didn't complain or uh, I mean, um, lamenting, no, nothing. Because their seeking is so intense, so they felt that joy, even the conditions were worst that time actually. As mother said, this preoccupations with health, the means of subsistence, the framework of life, yeah. Because she is in the second para also, she is going there, no? Deliver those who are in this bondage. Of course, when you seek the divine life, definitely that deliverance you will get, I feel like that actually. Because the food and uh, other things became secondary. If, if your seeking is very intense and deep. So this is a very good prayer also. Deliver, we can pray like this. <laughs> Deliver us from this bondage. We can really pray like that, actually. And, um, and the next para, uh, yeah. How shall I describe the, both these paras? How shall I describe that utter relief, that delightful lightness? which comes when one is free from all anxiety for oneself. Yes, this is also very soothing, very soothing actually. Next pair also, this relief, this deliverance thou hast granted to me, O thou divine master, life of my life and light of my life, beautiful lines, all these things. But in all this, I mean, all these paras I found uh, mother insisted upon that samatha and equality in everything that those things are also there indirectly we can feel that actually because one who is not giving importance to food or accommodation or that sleep definitely he is a yogi definitely it is it is there in Bhagavad Gita no that that's the election yeah 
so i felt those uh, i mean vibrations actually when i read this prayer very deep prayer really and also uh, this para i this thou who livest in me no this also she insisted upon very beautifully about the divine presence one thing reminded me one saying is there in tamil avanindri oranu masayadu so i felt yeah the, the nothing can move without his presence that is the meaning you know, she insisted on again and again with all these lines especially this line no without the the sublime love which vivifies coordinates animates and gives warmth to all things would be a yet unawakened possibility this is a very beautiful line i felt actually yeah how she is uh, i mean she has that love but that's why she can tell like that actually and also another thing also i felt uh, mother also from france and from japan she came to india to pondicherry the climate is a very bad climate but we can actually put a seal upon her she is an avatar so she could i mean um, bear all these hardships and everything difficulties but at least a little we should add her to those i mean i felt like that actually and also next line no is this not enough to cure us of every personal thought to make us spread our wings and soar above the contingencies of material life so as to fly away into the divine atmosphere and be able to return as thy messengers very beautiful yeah to the earth to announce the glorious tidings of the approaching advent very deep uh, i don't know how to express <laughs> yeah this line itself we can read again and again we will feel that uh, i mean at least that atmosphere we will feel i i mean i got that feeling actually and uh, again the ending also oh divine master as usual mother will always end like this no divine master sublime friend marvelous teacher master friend and teacher yeah this is also very beautiful yeah i don't know um, yeah. there are no words to express <laughs> It's very rich, yeah. Only beautiful. This, like, yeah. Beautiful. Thank you Thank so you. much. Yeah. 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 yeah, it's beautiful. It just goes deep in the heart, you know. If one sits with this prayer, or you know, so many others. Yeah, beautiful. Yeah, anyone who wants to share next. Jishnu ji, Duba, yeah, yeah. Jishnu ji, please go ahead. So, Panita ji, first of all, yes, as Chitra ji read and explained, <coughs> reflected, um, it's very deep and beautiful prayer. I mean, it's and uh, because it is long, there are prayers within prayers, we can say. So, and uh, very poetic, I would say, the language that she has used, the way she has expressed. I mean, even. I mean, the spirituality. If somebody wants to see just the aesthetics of the language, the beauty, they can see how she has addressed. Now, coming to the prayer, <clears throat> I would say yes that she started the O oh Lord, Master of our life. Let us soar very high above all care of our material preservation. Nothing is more humiliating and depressing. then these thoughts so constantly turns towards the preservation of the body these preoccupations with the health the means of substance substance the framework of life and um, <clears throat> i remember she in her conversations um, to the school students she said that you will go and you will meet uh, normal people i mean she said and when she said normal she meant that people who are driven by normal desires or normal goals of life and she said that they are they are exclusively concerned with the what to eat what will be the uh, physical comfort in which they can live 
And this, of course, she spoke maybe around 40 years later, but here, what, uh, for 45 years later, uh, after she wrote this prayer, and here what we see is that she said that, one, let us be identified with the divine and soar above these necessities, soar above the bondages. It means that she never said that, do not neglect it, but she said, soar above the bondages, the necessities which are created by this requirements of physical uh, preservation. How very insignificant is all this, a thin smoke that a simple breath can disperse or a single thought turned toward the dispel like a vain mirage. <clears throat> She's saying, I, as I, I, I say that as one identifies with the divine or uh, even a partially one single thought, one lofty idea. <laughs> changes the it changes the atmosphere it lifts up the viewpoint of a seeker from what is around them to something which is above them <clears throat> deliver those who are in this bondage O oh lord even as though are this those who are the slaves of passion on the path that leads to thee these obstacles are at once terrible and puerile terrible for those who are yet under their sway Pural for one who has passed beyond. And she is saying that people who are working in the, uh, people who are slaves of passion, people who are slaves who are controlled by their desire, <clears throat> by their passion, this path. And she says very explicitly, it, these look very childish to people who have moved beyond it. And it is terrible for those who are under the influence. And we all know people who have been driven, even ourselves, when we are driven by lower desires, when we are driven by these elements or forces of the lower vital, how painful it is, how difficult, how terrible, that's the exact word she is saying, how terrible it is. And when we pass through it, at times when we see it happening in others' life, we basically, because it's not happening with us, we are not attached to it. We see how child it is, childish it is. Uh, at times, the problems in other lives looks very childish for us. So this is so simple. Same for us once we pass through it, once we are behind it, once those things are behind us, those obstacles look very childish. How shall I describe the utter relief, that delightful lightness, which comes when one is free from all anxiety from oneself, for one's life and health and satisfaction and even one progress. So here she is saying that once, when somebody is surrendered, when somebody has offered everything to the divine, then they have no anxiety and they are freed from all the worries. This relief, this deliverance thou has granted to me, O thou divine master, life of my life, light of my light, O thou, who unceasingly teaches me love and makest me know the purpose of my existence. And let us, well, we all know the words, but let us see that she is saying, you who unceasingly, who is constantly teaching me love and make me know the purpose of my existence, that Lord has granted me this deliverance. It is thou who livest in me, thou alone. And why should I be preoccupied with myself and what might happen to me. It's like the complete identification when she is saying, it is you who is living in me. And because of that, I have no anxiety. I have no worries that what will happen to me. Without thee, the dust constituting this body that strives to manifest thee would disperse amorphous and inconscient. Without thee, this sensibility which makes possible a relation with other centers of manifestation would vanish into dark inertia. Without thee, this thought that animates and illumines whole being would be vague, vacant, unrealized. So here she is saying that basically that without the divine, without you, there is no existence. Without you, there is no meaning. Without you, there is no creation. To summarize, Without thee, the sublime life which vivifies, coordinates, animates, and gives warmth to all things would be a yet unawakened possibility. There is no possibility without, without, the, without your presence. 
without thee all is inert brute inconscient that is lifeless without thou art all that illumines and enraptures us the whole reason of our existence and our goal it is not enough to cure us of every personal thought to make us spread our wings and soar above the contingencies of material life so as to fly away into thy divine atmosphere and be able to return as thy messengers to earth announce the glorious tidings of thy approaching advent and here as we can relate with savitri also she is she is not speaking about just the personal deliverance that she is making that prayer that it is not enough that you cure us of the personal thought why can't we soar above soar above all this and be returned to the earth that is returned to this material world returned to the world which that time was inconscient or seemingly inconscient to return and tell that there is such a life there is such a thought or a plane of consciousness which is glorious where there is no worries and uh, which will be free of all normal anxieties o divine master sublime friend marvelous teacher in a fecund silence i bow to thee that's all from my side beautiful thank you so much krishna ji so uh, josa ji uh, think is listening today mostly so luba and sapna if any one of you want to share any reflections add ons or anything in this prayer i was thinking about this line which is uh, comes to the last uh, para uh, this one a little yes a little uh, yes that mother is saying it is not enough to cure us of every personal thought to make us spread our wings and soar above the contingencies of material life but what she is saying that she prays to god that that we should return as a messenger to uh, messengers to earth to announce the glorious tidings of thy approaching event advent so this i was thinking how how it can be done for for us also that that was affecting my attention this line that what mother is saying it's not enough that this what she is aspiring also to be a messenger of his approaching advent that I was reflecting upon yeah i think that's really very powerful this few lines on this mother usually shares that each one of us is very unique and we have to allow this flowering of each uniqueness to happen but the way we usually live in the ordinary consciousness uh, what happens is that we are just all alike full of worries and there is hardly any uniqueness about us but when we allow this unification with divine more and more more and more in whatever capacity we do this blossoming of the being happens you know so one has the capacity to blossom like a very unique flower and then one's presence itself is a beautiful contribution to the existence uh so i would see that uh, the more we go off from the plane of living by the ego consciousness you know me and my story the more we unify ourselves become one with the divine within we allow the blossoming also to happen which is very unique blossoming to each one of us and that's the i would say a flower does not have to do anything you know to spread the message of beauty and joy and innocence and just like that each one of us when we are absolutely more and more gradually with increasing degree are unified with our divine essence 
we do become like flowers you know and exude our fragrance wherever we go you know and there we are actually divine messengers because whoever comes in contact with that peace harmony beauty and love uh, would be touched how a flower touches us yeah and then i don't even need to uh, speak a lot of words maybe speech might be one's way of expression but even your presence you know your presence which is full of faith beauty love kindness compassion your presence itself serves like a messenger that as jishnu ji was sharing that there is a plane of consciousness living in this body we can uh, live from the plane of divine consciousness rather than living by the ego me and my story all the time yeah so i think uh, i would see it a bit through this window also yes, yes luba yeah yeah i mean i listened what you said i agree that's only how we can be a messenger of divine messengers to go and unite yourself with that highest self yeah yeah right anything more anything more on this prayer you want to share Um, Luba, if Luba is finished, that I could say something. Yeah. Yeah. Luba, uh, do you want to add on something, or are you done? Uh, I'm done. Okay. okay. Yes, Swapna. Then please uh, go ahead. Yeah, for me, of course, everything you all said um, is beautiful, and I I agree. And uh, as always, I. apply it to my life you know and especially when it's current in the now and i notice the challenge of it um you know the the beautiful promise that mother speaks of and of course i trust i trust her and the promise of this prayer and all you all have said as you relate to it i trust it i believe it to be true and i notice the challenge of accessing it um as i use my example today i'm doing work towards something that is very much around money a legal situation and uh you know this so called superficial layer of life practically in you know, a material life and then when i aspire for this line um near the beginning you know well all of it of course but say you need to think about how there's nothing nothing is more humiliating and depressing than these thoughts right constantly turn towards the preservation of the body these preoccupations with health the means of subsistence the framework of life and this how very insignificant is all this and a th- here she is saying a thin smoke that a simple breath can disperse or a single thought turned towards the dispels to spell like a vain mirage and when it doesn't feel like a mirage right and when it does feel like it's very important and money um how the challenge just this she calls it a bondage the next line right deliver those who are in this bondage oh lord and in this moment as i sit with it you know i see as i was following all of you i see the lightness and the freedom and then here i am with my computer on with the other papers around me and i look you know i can just turn to them knowing i have to come back to dealing with them and it's just this that's what i'm with it's like oh how can i literally here i've got the both of the prayer up on my screen i have all these practical things around me that can pull me out of the prayer or i can't even totally access the prayer and so i'm just sitting with that um tussle or the living it living this prayer out in my moment to moment yes yeah that's a beautiful example so fun that you have shared 
think uh, that's where we need to, as you were sharing, you know, that practical, <laughs> you know, yes, we know, yes, we know. But then when it comes to the practice of it, we see that there are many, many gaps, like gulfs in between. We don't know how to go, you know, bridge the gap. And I think this is where our magician-like ability comes in the picture, that this is what gives us joy. First, we have a challenge. First, we have a big gulf. And then slowly with our efforts, sincerity, uh, once we bridge that gulf and, you know, that hooray, you know, at least one baby step and then another challenge may come. But uh, I think this is where our potential as human spirit lies. So we don't have to, first of all, feel ashamed uh, that, okay, this is the problem. And although I know so much, yet I'm not able to practice this in life. Why not ashamed? Because the journey is from suffering to bliss. The journey is from darkness to light. The journey is from living as ego to living as you know, more and more as divine consciousness. So we don't have, first of all, to feel any guilt or shame looking at the challenges wherever we find ourselves in practical lives. Because that drains a lot of energy and we don't need that. That's where we start from. And this start is not that, you know, some people have started and others have not. This start comes every moment. We have to bridge the gulf, gulf every moment. So some of the challenge will be thrown up and that's how we rise above the challenge. So the thing that you were sharing, you know, that I have this practical situation at hand which revolves around uh, this preservation of the body, maintenance of the framework of life and all that. But parallelly, parallelly, if we, if we can give utmost importance to my own peace and sanity, nothing, nothing at all, no paperwork, you know, nothing, no matter how important it may seem, can take the place of that peace and sanity within. So we have to actually become in this, this sense absolutely, I would say, selfish, you know, in, in this sense uh, where it comes to our peace because divine is peace. You know, whenever we go to divine, we are asking for peace. So the divine is peace itself. And what I am doing right now is I'm putting peace at stake and making something else more important. Not that that something should not be done. It is a practical relevance. It must be done. But not bargaining our peace and sanity to fulfill the other things. You know, what if the paperwork remains in, I'm not saying that leave it incomplete, by all means you do it, you know, but just kind of reflecting upon it that we don't have to give too much importance to the external matters of life. First and foremost is the inner stillness and inner calm. And then whatever work is getting done through the inner calm would be a divine work, whether it's involving finances, you know, papers and everything. But somehow we see that living as egos, our, our priorities are displaced, misplaced. You know, we, we don't give much uh, uh, kindness and focus to our own sanity and inner calm. Everything else becomes so, so important. And after that, you know, when the phase is over, we are again hankering after peace only. While on the first place, we bargained it for something else. So I think here... Uh, Again and again, we need to set a very clear kind of, I would say this is self-love, you know, that we have to be so kind to ourselves that nothing at all can come in between me and my peace. That's the foremost responsibility that I have as a human being. And whatever work gets done out of peace would be a beautiful work. And whatever does not get done, you know, uh, whatever gets done in agitation and aggression will again have repercussions after repercussions, you know, what we call as cause and effect. So can we first kind of you know, tap into this inner being and bring calmness, stillness, relaxation, that nothing at all is important, but the feet of the Lord, which is my peace, my sanity. And then whatever gets done, okay. And whatever cannot be done also okay because that does not define you that does not any work which gets done 
or does not get done, it does not define us as human beings. I'm not limited by whatever I do or not do. I am vast, just like the divine is vast. And the divine is not separate from me because if I would say that the divine is separate from me, then the divine would have to be limited. But the divine is unlimited. So the divine is at every moment one with me. And what we are is just the divine essence as you know, these lines were sharing. What animates me is you. you know, this without the the sublime love, love which vivifies, coordinates, animates and gives warmth to all things would be an unawakened possibility. What looks through my eyes, what hears through my ears, what smells through my nose, what is animating my own existence, what thinks through my thought. So whole being is animated with that divine presence and we are so lost in the external mostly that we ignore it completely. That, oh my God, there is something alive in me. And that, you know, when you guys were sharing on this, it reminded me of this story from the Upanishads where uh, the gods have won over the Asuras. Maybe some of you know. You know and uh, they are celebrating the victory that, hey, yes, we have won, we have won. Now they are too much in their arrogance that it is me who have won. You know, it's the gods who have the victory over the Asuras. They have forgotten that it's the divine in the gods that has the victory. So it, it, the claimant is the divine and not the ego. But then how it works is like this, that the gods are celebrating their victory. They have forgotten that the victory is divine victory. And to put them on ground, the divine takes the form of a yaksha, a beautiful person. And then he comes, a wise person. He comes and it stands outside the party, wherever the party is happening. And he says that I want to be a part of party too. But uh, the caretaker says that you cannot be the part of party because it is for the gods. It, the gods have won the victory. So he says that it's not the gods who have won the victory. Okay, call someone from within. So Indra sends first Agni to talk with this fellow. And he has a discourse with Agni. He talks with Agni. And he says that if you think that you have won owing to your power, try to make this little stick burn with your power. So Agni tries to uh, fire it up or you know, kind of burn it up. And he's not able to. Agni is not able to with all its efforts. Then Vayu comes and Vayu, he again has a discourse with Vayu and he asks that if you think that you have the power, you are the victor over all the Asuras, then with your power, sway this little stick in the air. And he's not able to again, you know, so all of them one by one come and go and, you know, they realize that, oh my God, this is something which we are missing, maybe the point. So towards the end, the Indra, Indra Dev, you know, he comes out and he sees that the person is gone. That person is not to be found. And then he talks to a, a lady who, who is called Uma Hemvati Devi. And he asks that who was that fellow who was standing here? And then the lady explains that he was the one who makes you breathe. He is the one who makes the fire burn up. He is the one who makes the wind sway away. So each thing, each essence in us is brimming full of the divine presence. And yet the ignorance is so dark somehow, how we are born in ignorance. It's so dark that we keep on missing the very, very obvious. So can we bring our attention back to this very obvious that who makes me think of the divine, for example? Who makes me think of the divine? Where is this yearning coming from? Who makes the thought move where is the movement coming from so that was really a very revelatory story that when i read it that if we allow ourselves to stop and pause we will see that the divine was and never is separate from me but i think i feel that it requires a lot of slowing down in in oneself otherwise we are just running 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 after things to be done which appears so, so important that we bargain everything for that.
so uh, so let's go over it once more and then we and whenever please anyone has reflections please share yes this yes, one uh, very small anecdote i would please. say yes sir. that uh, at ashram somebody complained to mother that there is a lot of wastage of things or money at the ashram and then mother said that uh, because you can see that because you can see that you can feel you are thinking of that wastage money or material things but what about the consciousness that is wasted has anybody thought about it what a big wastage that is happening the force the power or the consciousness which i am pouring on she said the divine is pouring upon us which we are squandering away beautiful you are so lost in the gross matter that absolutely ignore the subtle yeah You know, Monica, before yeah. you go over your prayer, because it's always nice to have that part at the end when yeah. you cover it. Yeah. Please. I notice, um, because of course there's those days when something so challenging in the material world isn't so up, you know, up in my face, so prominent. And then I notice it's much easier that, for example, this weekend, you know, I'm by a lake, I'm in nature, I'm doing something I love to do, which is dancing with friends, swimming. And it's so easy to feel this prayer, for example, and the energy of it, you know, expansive and the lightness that mother speaks about, um, you know, the line that says, um, where is that? where she promises, like my screen is frozen, but there's a above a little bit higher. I look at your screen because I was using my screen. Um, well, it's near the beginning about just the lightness that you can feel. Yeah, how shall I describe that utter relief, that delightful lightness, right? Which comes from one is free. Um, from all anxiety for oneself, for one's life and health and satisfaction and even one's progress. And so as I sit here and I go, yes, I remember just, just like, you know, yesterday or Sunday, you know, having this openness, this amazingness, that this, this very line. And then today, if I stay somehow with my awareness in my mind and the superficial outside of my body, then there's more anxiety. And if I take an active awareness, literally deep, you know, behind the superficial heart center, going behind deep, using imagination, using some sensation to go really like behind and very inside deep, then I can turn my eyes towards all this paperwork and what I need to continue. And it's a deadline today. So it, really has to be done today you know and 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 I can just look at it all and there is more peace so I just wanted to share that you know like this in this present moment this this where my literally where my awareness rests in terms of the superficial or an inner deeper place with eyes open with looking at something challenging and it can shift you know but it uh, yeah it takes a lot of well, quite a lot of effort at this stage. That's beautiful. Yeah, I think anything, you know, Swapna, I feel anything, anything at all, you know, and uh, it may appear very, very cruel to others or in the social norms. Anything at all, if it allows us this deeper turn, I think it's worth it. It's a very cheap bargain, very, very cheap bargain. Yeah, so if a challenge is allowing me, if anxiety is allowing me to go deep within the being and work from there, I think just take it as a blessing, I would say, because otherwise what happens is that we are, when we are having an okay day, what we call a, a normal, okay, not suffering day, we forget. We again come to a very superficial living. We are like dog's tail, as Sri Aurobindo says you know that human nature is like dog steel and i have felt it so much in uh, myself just a second just a second
yeah so i have felt it so much in myself that uh, it happens you know that uh, one really needs to straighten up oneself otherwise without pain without suffering we do not bother to stay continuously in a deep immersed state like you know even day to day workings are taking place from that deeply immersed uh, state as you were talking about you know going behind deep into the heart and working from there it it mostly uh, it happens when we are thrown up with a very intense challenge or very intense uh, dukh or suffering only then we are able to touch firstly that space and then slowly 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 we have to allow ourselves to make it a normal thing for ourselves this in gathered consciousness and not you know kind of really dispersed and thrown away all the time so i think uh, it's beautiful what you shared if any any challenge any opportunity is making you work from this deep place within i think it's a blessing it's it's a truly a blessing and it's a proof that the divine grace is there again you know although we don't need proofs but yet yeah yeah anything more anyone any anyone wants to share before we go over it again so i'll uh, go like kind of briefly go through it and maybe if i see anything i'll add on and if you have any sharings unmute and share please so august 17 1930 oh lord master of our life i think again very important because very good good to reflect upon that who do i consider to be the master of my life me and my story or the divine sense the divine guidance o lord master of our life let us soar very high above all care for our material preservation hmm? so when we work as servants of divine truth things are taken care of things will be taken care of and whatever needs to be done externally we will be doing we will be using our mind and body for that but usually we are not the servants of the divine the usual state is that i am a servant of me and my story that's what is the master of my life and there it i need to again and again bother myself for the material preservation so it's not a truly selfless living that i live and hence i need to be bothered about it again and again again and again because who will look after me if not myself but if i am living for the divine truth then all these uh, you know things about if what happens if i have a disease or what happens to my family what will happen if i move all these things just become very very trivial they lose the grip over us so as if you know as she shares let us soar very high so as if you have grown away from it you have a larger picture now it does not matter much as chitra ji was sharing you know whether when seekers were coming to the ashram they didn't did not matter what matters is do i have the feet of my lord rest everything becomes unnecessary nothing is more humiliating and depressing than these thoughts so i think it's more like a red signal the moment i have depression and suffering in life i can be sure that i have put my hands into me and my story it's a very beautiful signal and i can stop right there i can stop right there the pattern of thoughts emotions whatever is making me getting trapped in me and my story nothing is more humiliating and depressing than these thoughts so constantly turn towards the preservation of the body these preoccupations with health the means of subsistence framework of life how very insignificant is all this a thin smoke that a simple breath can disperse or a single thought turned towards thee dispelled like a vain mirage and absolutely true that when we are trapped in this it does not appear like a mirage and that's the beauty of mirage you know that's why it is called an illusion because you cannot really know that it is real or not real 
if it you could really clearly know that it is just maya you know then it it would be nothing maya would be a khel you know it's it would be like a play but maya or illusion is something which appears so so real that is its power it will appear so real that you will give all your peace and sanity away you will leave the feet of the lord and you will run after whatever needs to be fixed so that's the beauty of mirage the property of mirage the quality of mirage that it makes itself very 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 real and important and that's why kabir would say that as long as i have breath in the body i need to be very vigilant any time anything can become very important and ask me to give away my peace would i let it or would i not would i recognize that it's again a trap of maya or illusion or would i get swayed and even if i get swayed the way it is made is that even if we get swayed through our getting swayed and then rising above it we slowly realize more and more with conviction conviction that what is the right way for us to go yeah so any thought turns this is very powerful that even if we are able to a single thought turns toward the now what is the i'm sure there can be many many ways to reflect upon this you know maybe a very lofty idea or thought or words full of illumination truth and the other way a direct way referred by uh, masters of non duality would say that just turn your attention to the awareness that you are when you say that you are sad you are saying i am aware that i am sad what what happens because my attention is totally focused to the sad person in the role play i forget that i am not the sad person in the role play i'd also play that role but i am also more and more the awareness which plays the role which creates the imagery of the sad person so if i turn my attention to this awareness self aware awareness within me all the drama will appear just like a mirage i will not be able to get trapped in that drama anymore who am i i am the one who is aware of the things i am the one who is aware of all the happenings of life all the ups and downs of life i am not limited by the character i play at times and then immediately one breath and the whole you know, the suffering that was continuing through since some days would just come to an end yeah so that's also a possibility along with many other things that that can turn our focus back to within deliver those who are in this bondage because it's it's a it's suffering you know when we are not our true being when we think that we are the ego it it makes us suffer it is a red signal you know that tells me not right way to go not right way to go so if the suffering or depression would not come how would i know that i have identified myself to the character of the place so so strongly so it's good that the suffering comes because it just makes me gives me a signal that i have identified myself at the wrong place i am not that limited character that i portray i am the actor who is limitless undefinable vast and cannot be touched by any role that he plays and immediately the bondage disappears so deliver those who are in this bondage o oh lord even as those who are the slaves of passion whenever we are passionately lurking after something although passion makes us move it also is a helper but many a times our identity is based on my passion who am i i am the dancer so if i am not able to dance who am i i am nothing and that makes me scared yeah so my whole identity gets identified with being a dancer being a speaker you know being a spiritual seeker on the path and that is where we have to step back and know that that is just a part who i am truly is vast and indefinable just like the divine because we are the divine in true essence so wherever we limit ourselves we experience suffering 
the moment i am having putting in cage to myself an image to myself i experience suffering again a signal for me to come back on the path that leads to the these obstacles are at once terrible and pure i terrible for those who are yet under their sway you know all of us have tasted when we are in the clutches of a challenge which appears so so real it is terrible we suffer puerile for the for one who has passed beyond it and the moment we are over it the moment we have had the journey the joy ride you know or the suffering ride and we are out of that challenge in established in our true essence we see that oh my god how could i have been there but yet you were there yet we all have been there so it appears very childish it appears that how could that thing become so important in my life that i could give away my peace to it yeah so that but that i think that only comes through our own challenges and experiences going through them that first we go through that terrible experience terrible suffering and then we see later as oh my god you know it was really uh, childish on my part to be so stubbornly sticking to one thing that okay this is how it should happen this is how it should happen you know it's in our stubbornness that makes we make thing even more challenging for us and then once we are stabilized in our inner, inner truth in our essence we are one with ourselves we are home how shall i describe that utter relief that delightful lightness which comes when one is free from all anxiety for oneself you know that so the me and my story is absolutely vanished as if from my being a carelessness has come kabir would say you know chaha miti chinta gayi manwa beparwa jinko kuch nahi chahiye wo shahan ke shah so who is a king who is a true king a true king is the one who does not have any worries left who does not have any wants left and that can be only when i am one with my truth who i am truly this self aware awareness only there can i find a peace and a relaxation and a relief from me and my story this relief this deliverance thou hast granted to me o thou divine master so again mother is sharing her own experience that i am one with the divine so i am free from the burden of carrying that ego on me and she is thanking you know this relief this deliverance from that burden thou hast granted to me o thou divine master life of my life light of my light so who gives me light there is a light that lights up my light there is a fire that lights up my fire there is a life that lights up my life so everything is enmeshed with the divine presence absolutely o thou who unceasingly teaches me love the more closer we become to our inner being the more love full of love we become because love is our truth love is our essence and the more far away we are from our inner being although we can never be far away but when we are in thoughts lost in our dramas we feel far away there we feel lack of love in our life and the more close and one we become with our own inner truth the more love spills out from us unceasingly teaches me love and makes me know the purpose of my existence which mother and shurubindo have shared to unite with the divine with more and more greater degree and to spill it out in the world the world as we were sharing earlier it comes later in the prayer it is thou who livest in me now when we reflect over this line you know it's a sacred life that we have because you are living in me how can i waste this consciousness as jishnu ji was sharing you know that so much energy so much consciousness is waste in so much mundane affairs trivia chatting gossiping it is thou who livest in me thou alone and is it is the same thou living in each and every one each and every grain of existence 
and why should i be preoccupied with myself and what might happen to me who do i why do i care without thee the dust constituting this body that strives to manifest thee would disperse amorphous and inconsent you know we see the dead bodies lying the person is gone where is the life where is the vibrance where is the presence it's gone so the the body by itself the matter by itself has no you know uh, animation the animation is provided by this living presence within us which we so obviously keep on ignoring most part of our lives so it she says that it will just disperse amorphous inconsent without the the sensibility which makes possible a relation with all other centers of manifestation would vanish into a dark inertia so everything that makes us relate to different fields of experiences how would that happen if not for this animating intelligent presence within our being without the this thought that animates and illumines the whole being would be vague you know it's absolutely i can actually deeply resonate with that story because there also it was mentioned that where is the thought getting its energy from what is making it it move what is making the thought luminous without the this thought that animates and illumines the whole being would be vague vacant unrealized without the the sublime love which vivifies coordinates animates and gives warmth to all things would be yet an unawakened possibility without the all is inert it has no life at all brute or inconsent thou art all that illumines and enraptures us the whole reason of our existence and all of our goal is this not enough to cure us the moment i get deeply in touch with this presence is this not enough and if it has not been enough it can be actually vice versa you know that if it has not been enough then i have really not truly touched the divinity you know, so i should actually make more effort if it requires effort mother says that in the beginning when we are uh, putting in habit of concentrating and put you know focusing on a, a thing that you we are doing initially we have to put a lot of effort concentration is not something which comes very naturally as we grow up so if the effort is needed in order to unite with the divine presence put that effort it's a worth effort it's a worthy effort so is this not enough to cure us of every personal thought to make us spread our wings and soar above the contingency of material life so as to fly away into that divine atmosphere and being having dipped in the holy ganges you know having dipped in our true source the awareness having have the holy dips there be able to return as thy messengers to earth to announce the glorious tidings of thy approaching advent. so the more we keep on dipping ourselves in our truth one with ourselves relax without any worries whenever we come out in the world whenever we come out of that dip into the world we carry that light in our actions we carry that light in our speech we carry that light in our whole being yeah that that is our job as human beings thy messengers o divine master sublime friend marvelous teacher i think chitra ji was sharing beautiful you know uh, how mother addresses master friend and a teacher so beautiful uh, kind of a relationship with the divine o divine master sublime friend and marvelous teacher in a fucking silence i bow to thee and then the true gratitude which does not even needs to be cultivated the true gratitude when you touch this space when you take dips in this space within the true gratitude 
comes forward. Yeah, so please uh, share if any reflections. Regarding that ending, no, as Jishnuji uh, also shared about that messenger, yeah. That is a beautiful thing in Savitri. I will read that. Yeah, please. It is from, yeah, it is from page number 696. Mm -hmm. uh, 696 to 97, it okay. goes, actually. Uh, the God of Death is transferred into a perfect Godhead in the end, actually. He mm -hmm. is ready to give all the boons to Savitri. Mm -hmm. So he is telling, choose spirit, thy supreme choice. So now Savitri is asking boons for the sake of the earth. Now, mm -hmm. first boon she is asking, thy peace, O Lord, a boon within to keep. And next boon, thy calm, O Lord, that bears thy hands of joy. And in page number 697, next boon. Thy oneness, Lord, in many approaching hearts. And next boon, thy energy, Lord, to seize on woman and man. From 696 to 97, this is coming. I am reading about only those lines. Thy peace, O Lord, a boon within to keep. And next, thy calm, O Lord, that bears thy hands of joy. And next, 9697, thy oneness, Lord, in many approaching hearts. And next, thy energy, Lord, to seize on woman and man. And next, thy embrace, which rends the living knot of pain. Thy joy, next one, O Lord, in which all creatures breathe. Thy magic flowing, flowing waters of deep love. Next, thy sweetness give to me for earth and men. Actually, these lines we used to do as a prayer. Thy peace, thy calm, thy oneness, thy energy, thy embrace, thy joy, deep love, sweetness. For us and for the sake of the universe, we can do this prayer actually. So when Vishnuji is pointing out the, about that messengers, no, immediately these lines, I mean, came to me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I Beautiful. want to share. Thank you so much. Yeah. If you have it as a prayer, could you yeah. post it on our chat, please, as a photo or as any, any way? I really like that combination. These lines? Yes. Yeah, what she just said, you know, that um, she said it, we used to say it like a prayer. I yeah. wondered if it was written and if, if yeah, it could the, be shared this line she underlined, yeah. She, this so I can, I can put together all these lines that Chitraji has shared and I'll share it on the chat. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah, there is um, another line. Thank you, Chitraji, for bringing that Savitri. Another line from Savitri came to my mind. Mm -hmm. uh, imperfect is the joy that is not shared with all. Mm -hmm. And that is what Mother is saying. I mean, you have personally delivered, but what about yeah. others? Yeah. Let us soar and come back. Mm -hmm. So that uh, I was also thinking. Yeah. Chitraji yeah. also brought Savitri. I remembered that line. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Great. So thank you, everyone. Thank you for sharing. Thank you. This is uh, thank you, Monica, for selecting this prayer. Also, really very deep prayer. It is. Yes. Thank you. I've gone through so many times today. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's beautiful. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Chitra. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. -bye.